What builds are the best players using now that it's preseason? If you've asked that question or want every advantage that you can to win your games, I've got you covered. Hey there summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I hope that you're enjoying the preseason as well as your holiday season. This video will cover the latest Korean builds for all the preseason patch, so make sure you stay tuned as we'll cover the new builds for all 5 roles. Also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's just get started. Starting off, let's talk about the two top lane builds. The very first one is for Rennington. This is a new build that players are running that lets his strength shine. He's a powerful 1v1 duelist that's able to dominate his lane and proceed to dominate the game. First, his runes haven't changed all too much. Take press the attack, triumph, legend alacrity, coup de grace, second wind, demolish, double adaptive force, and a defensive rune of choice. His items do incorporate a couple of new ones, so take notes here. You want to build Blade of the Rune King, defensive boots, Jack Show, Spare of Shojin, Death's Dance, and Maul Mamordius. Starting off the game, you'll still rush damage to apply kill pressure with Blade of the Rune King. From there, however, you want to build the new item Jack Show, the Protean. This item adds an insane amount of durability, and after you max out its stacks during combat, you deal a significant amount of damage. You basically end up indestructible while dealing disgusting amounts of damage. Following it, you'll build Spare of Shojin, which significantly increases your mobility, damage, sustain, and even the number of times that you'll be able to stun your opponent. The combined ability haste from Jack Show and Spare of Shojin is enough to provide multiple rotations of spells in a skirmish. Next up on the list is Kled. Filling a similar niche to Rennington, he's a chaotic and explosive top laner that proves to not only be dangerous but extremely durable with the help of the mythic item that we just talked about. First, I'll mention that you want to run Ignite. Giving Kled some extra kill pressure turns him into a lethal laner. After a single trade, it becomes difficult to gank him as he's able to simply trade one for one for several situations. Sometimes he might be able to turn the fight around in a 2v1 given the right circumstances. That being said, you're still going to run Teleport so you can snowball harder in lane and also assist your teammates later into the game. For his runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Demolish, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Ravenous Hydra, Defensive Boots, Jack Show, Blade of the Rune King, Spare Visage, and Death's Dance. This build makes Kled an unkillable monster who also has plenty of lifesteal. He's a huge nuisance to deal with in both 1v1s as well as teamfights. That covers the top lane builds, so we'll put them up on the screen for you. Make sure you write them down, take a screenshot, or just save them, and let's move on to the jungle next. With the introduction of the new jungle item starters, it's also important to carefully note what players are starting with. Our first build is for Diana. For Rune, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. To start, you want to take Moss Stomper Seedling. The bonus shield, tenacity, and slow resistance makes Diana even harder to peel off during fights. Next for items are Nasher's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rod of Ages, Sunfire Ages, Sonya's Hourglass, and Rabadon's Deathcap. With Sunfire Ages and Rod of Ages, you're going to have plenty of bonus health to dive straight into the enemy backline and create some chaos. Zhonya's Hourglass lets you stall for even more time, allowing your teammates to join the battle, while you also get the chance to wait for your cooldowns. Rod of Ages and Nashra's Tooth provides enough ability haste for you to scale into later stages of the game, so you're getting practically everything that you need with this build. Next up is Amumu, and this is an excellent build to bring out what he's known for, impactful team fighting. For runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Font of Life, Conditioning, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. This is going to be a tanky build that also deals substantial damage, so taking Conqueror will make you not only more threatening, but also heal a bit during the course of a fight. As we mentioned in one of the previous videos, it's very difficult to jungle as a Mumu right now, because the jungle item does not provide Omnivamp. Anyway, if you do decide to play him, use this build. You'll want to start with Moss Stomper Seedling as well, since you're going to be acting as a frontliner and initiator for your team. The next items are Sunfire Ages, Defensive Boots, Demonic Embrace, Radiant Virtue, Abyssal Mask, and Zanya's Hourglass. Radiant Virtue is a huge pickup on Mumu as it makes his ult even more impactful. It's typically how you signal to your team that you're starting a fight, and then you proceed to buff up your allies afterwards. While Mumu's ultimate is on a longer cooldown, it's an impactful one that you have to use to try to win teamfights hard. Radiant Virtue also adds onto the strategy, granting your team an even better chance at winning a fight that should be advantageous. Moving forward, that covers the jungle builds, so again, take a look on the screen for a recap of them. Speaking of the new jungle items, let's ask our question of the day. Do you have any favorite items that were added or changed in this preseason? My personal favorite is that they changed tank items to allow for some more versatility. You can now purchase Sunfire Aegis or Turbo Chem Tank as separate items allowing for some diversity in builds. We'll run through the mid lane builds next. For our first build, we'll talk about one for Malzahar. This build is focused around killing squishy targets, and that being said, he still feels like a solid threat to tank your foes, while also having an easier time taking out enemy carries. For runes, take Arcane Common, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. His items are Rod of Ages, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rally's Crystal Scepter, Demonic Embrace, Rabadon's Death Cap, and Void Staff. 
With Rod of Ages, Malzahar will scale hard into the later parts of the game, and will also end up much tankier while doing so. The amount of healing and durability provided by the item will ultimately make him harder to take out and give him more opportunities to kite with the help of Rally's Crystal Scepter slows. Second in the mid lane, we have a build for Twisted Fate. He's also benefited heavily from the addition or rather return of Rod of Ages. With his iconic pick of cards crowd control, the added durability makes him so much harder to take out of a fight. Bursting him down is far from an easy task, and if you're not able to successfully kill him in one go, he'll be able to lock you down with a stun, and you're going to be eating the brunt of his and his teammates' follow-up damage. Left untouched, however, you'll still deal heavy damage through the course of a teamfight. For runes, take Unsealed Spellbook, Perfect Timing, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Attack Speed is great for his E and also makes his last hitting a lot easier, letting you pick up that necessary gold. His items are Rod of Ages, Sorcerer's Shoes, Lich Bane, Rapid Fire Cannon, Rapid on Seth Cap, and Void Staff. Rapid Fire Cannon continues to be a powerful purchase on Twisted Fate. The extra range combined with the extra tankiness from Rod of Ages allows him to consistently and reliably impact games. We're finished with the mid lane build, so again we'll put them up on the screen for you. Take note of them and let's talk about the bottom lane builds next. For the bottom lane, we'll start with the new build for Kaisa. One thing I want to mention is that Exhaust is quite popular on her. You'll be able to peel yourself better, and unprepared enemy divers are going to have to deal with Kaisa's high mobility, on top of Summoner Exhaust to minimize their initial burst damage. Now, for the runes, you'll take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Blade of the Rune King, Bloodthirster, Navora's Quick Blades, and Lord Dominic's Regards. Kaisa with Navori Quick Blades is one of the highest DPS champions in the game right now. The bonus ability damage as well as the cooldown reduction on hit allows her to spam her Q for even more destruction. Also, she has access to her E more often, making her even harder to kill. For support build, we'll talk about Alistar. To start it off, his runes are Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, Water Walking, Hextech Flash Traption, Cosmic Insight, Ability Haste, Armor, and a Defensive Rune. It's an aggressive setup that provides extra mobility. This makes it a lot easier for him to land a stun, or instead try and quickly escape from certain death. For items, build Relic Shield, Radiant Virtue, Defensive Boots, Thorn Mail, Knight's Vow, and Abyssal Mask. Radiant Virtue, like we mentioned earlier, is great on tanks or supportive champions who rely heavily on their ultimates. As Alistar will usually pop his ultimate during a crucial fight, the extra buff that he grants his teammates should prove invaluable. The healing it also provides is really great for Alistar himself, as he'll be taking significantly reduced damage while his ultimate is active. That's it for the bottom lane build, so again we'll put them up on the screen before we move on to our final duo build that we're featuring this patch. For our combo this video, we have Kindred and Renata Glask. This combo is absurdly difficult to play against since it feels like whoever they're trying to kill on your team is suddenly unkillable. You have to deal with both Kindred's ultimate as well as Renata's W. Luckily, Kindred is already a powerful carry, so there will always be somebody who can make use of this broken ability combo. Combining the two abilities yields a powerful interaction that you should definitely try and abuse during teamfights. Players buffed by Renata's W won't bleed out while in Kindred's ultimate, giving them an extended window to try and earn back their life. It's pretty broken in chaotic fights, especially when the duo executes the combo effectively. For Kindred's runes, take Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For items, start with Moss Stomper. Although Scorch Claw is the most popular overall, high elo players are using Moss Stomper simply because it's such a good item and that extra shield is great on anybody. From there, build Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, The Collector, Blade of the Rune King, Navori Quick Blades, and Black Cleaver. Runata's runes are Glacial Augment, Perfect Timing, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, Pawn of Life, Bone Plating, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Her items are Spell Thief's Edge, Chemtech Putrefire, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Radiant Virtue, Redemption, and Staff of Flowing Water. Renata's also starting to see more use of Radiant Virtue, as her ultimate is a big signal for her teammates to go in and start a fight. That concludes our preseason Korean builds. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below, and also check out the description if you want to join our Discord. Anyway, with all that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.